some people have a difficult time um, embracing how God reveals himself in the Old Testament, saying that he's wrathful or, or it's not fair, and, and um, so how he dealt with history according to what's written in the Bible. And I um, disagree because I think that in the Old Testament, there's tons of displays of God's mercy and graciousness. And, um, and one being in Genesis 15, um, he pretty much tells Abraham what's to come, right? And I'll just start here. It says, know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and they'll be enslaved and mistreated for 400 years. And that's when the nation of Israel is, is multiplying in number, but they're enslaved in Egypt. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions, the exodus, you know. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, which is, you know, there are 40 years they wander in the desert, your descendants will come back here. And this is the element of this verse that shows that God is merciful and that he, he's all-knowing and he's all-powerful and he sees the end from the beginning, like Isaiah says. For the sin of the Amorites has not reached its full measure. So some might look at the conquest and say, oh, it's just so unfair. God's, you know, literally cutting just taking these people out of this land and his, his people are occupying it, but you see that some of the people in this land um, reached a measure of sin that required God's response because God is the creator of heaven and earth and you know he sees what is right. And he had given them plenty of time to you know, get with the program, so to speak, and the Amorites um, eventually behaved in such a way that required God's you know, response. And so that's one element. And in addition, in Joshua, when the people were getting ready to take the land and occupy the land, there was a prostitute named Rahab who had heard of the Lord's fame. She was not a Hebrew. She was a woman of the land. And she had heard of the Lord's fame. And when the, when the people came in to kind of assess the land, she was like, I've heard of your God, and everyone is, you know, this is, like, save me. Like, I do not want to be part of this disaster that's coming. And God spared her, right? And, and, and where another person during that time who was a Hebrew, who um, ended up taking some of the gold and coveting it and, and brought judgment on the nation, he didn't go into the promised land. So you see that it's not so much about God just being wrathful and I'm going to do what I'm going to do, but there is a way that God operates. He, he is literally carving out a people for himself. And in the Old Testament, it's, it's not only that he's, he's carving out this people for themselves, but they were to display a kingdom-like culture for the world to see for the overall good. And now we know that, you know, Israel didn't necessarily meet the mark in the Old Testament, and God has much in store for them in the future. However, we can learn from them, and we can also see God's grace around the nation, like with Rahab, um, that she, she was invited in to the family. And I believe she's in the line of Christ, the Messianic line of Christ. So that kind of breaks all, um, you know, borders there. So, yeah, it's in Matthew. It says, yes, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. So not only did God say, Rahab, the prostitute, I'm going to give you a new identity. You're coming into my family, but your, your very DNA is going to be in the line of Christ. And um, yeah, so I think that's amazing. And in addition here, it says that um, the father of Boaz, yeah. So, and also in the time of Ruth, um, Ruth was a Moabitess, and that was something that was a no-no for the nation, but she displayed such a, um, a longing to not forsake the family that she knew, and she clung to her mother-in-law. That, that moved God's heart. You know, there's just things that move God's heart and that he cannot deny himself. And there's things that bring God's judgment. And that's really the theme in the Bible, you know. 
but all things are possible in Christ. So those are some little glimpses of how my eyes view the Bible and um, how I see God as a God of mercy and grace and life. And things, um, people that display a desperation for what's right, God will never deny. And you see that in the Old Testament. So, yeah.